Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, the podcast where we talk about real-world applications of distributed ledger technology. My name is Zenobia Godstock, and I'm the SVP of communications here at Swirls Labs, helping to grow the Hedera ecosystem. Today, I am delighted to be joined by one of the new Hedera Governing Council board members, um, Monique Morrow from Cineverse. Hi, Monique. How are you? I'm very fine. It's a little bit hot over here in in Europe, but uh, as we spoke earlier, but I'm doing well, and it's a pleasure to be here. Good, good. Now, you are an independent board member, so um, many of the board members are affiliated with governing council members. Um, You are affiliated with Cineverse. So for our audience, can you tell us a little bit about Cineverse and your role there, and then maybe how you got involved with Hedera? Sure. Uh, it's a pleasure. Well, first and foremost, Cineverse is quite, uh, it's quite an old, uh, old company in the sense of, uh, it's at least 30 years old. Um, and we're in the mobile, uh, mob- mobility space. When I say mobile, mobile communication. So any of those text messages that you see, uh, kind of messaging is really the, the forefront of what we do as a company. They're based in Tampa, Florida. So that's headquarters. Although I'm based in Europe, we have a, we're a global uh, entity. And, um, in fact, let's just say that the, our, our customers, um, vary. Our customers are either, uh, mobile or, comp- uh, customers or, uh, MNBOs as we call them or mo carriers, if you want to say, say it that way and or large enterprise customers. So think about uh, banks and, you know, that of the like. I think yeah, that's one side of the house. That, that is, we have a carrier business and we have a, a, um, an enterprise business. What I do at Cineverse is that, um, I am a senior distinguished architect in emerging technology. And so examples of emerging technologies could be what we're talking about today. <laughs> so it'd be like distributed ledger technology, DLT, blockchain, quantum security or quantum computing, uh, and, uh, that of the like. Uh, in that uh, vein, I'm actually um, a, a a chair of the GSMA. You know, that's again sort of a it's a it's a public industry forum. What's well, a f- industry forum where we look at standardization? So I'm a chair in the DLT group. I actually chair that group, Distributed Ledger Technology Group, and uh, I'm also involved in the World Economic Forum, uh, in and the Wharton School in in the area of uh, DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations. So looking at how we, how we, what are the, how can we make that a, uh, a model that we could aspire to? There's so much negative press at the moment around DAOs. And, and so how could we actually put up the benefits, if you will? And so, uh, with that, uh, how did I get involved with, uh, how did I get involved with Hedera? So happens, uh, Hedera, it, it, it was, it, it was an opportunity in the sense of, uh, with, uh, Brett McDowell, I actually invited Brett to speak at the GSMA, talk about Hedera. I actually, uh, you know, working with one of our partners in IBM, uh, actually talked about, you know, possibly joining the council as a company. Uh, we kind of went back and forth on that and looked at other, uh, ways I could actually participate or contribute to Hedera. So the, 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 let's just say the, Dance together has been going on for about a, about a little over two years, about two years. And with that, uh, I have to say Hedera has been fantastic in the sense of I, I, I worked in the, I actually chaired, go chair the decentralized identity group. And then we had an enterprise group. We were actually going back and forth with uh, members of the uh, council or at least, at least in these, the way we were, we were kind of deconstructive, if you will, across verticals on types of use cases we could think about in terms of uh, uh, amplifying Hedera in the industry. So that's been my journey uh, with Hedera. And I have to say, um, it's a, it's, it's a, it's been a great uh, discussion opportunity. And I'm, as I said before, so thrilled 
to be a, a, a new member of the board. Um, so as a, as an independent member, uh, and so that's, uh, that's an honor for me. Wonderful. And it seems like you have such a broad purview over, um, you know, so many things that you get exposure to and get to see with all the um, working groups that you are a part of. Um, how did you, how did you initially come to find Brett and Hedera? Well, that was through one of our, as I said before, that was through one of the partners, uh, we, I've been working with at least, uh, have, had been working with at least uh, through Cineverse, uh, IBM. So one of the, uh, uh, one of the participants from IBM who's since, uh, left and departed and has gone on to do other things. Uh, and so it just one thing led to another. And that was more or less, you know, hey, you, you may be interested in looking at what we're doing in Hedera. In fact, you know, when we're participating and, uh, it was, a, you know, the IBM, one of the user groups that uh, we had a couple of years ago through, through IBM, um, it was, they were talking about how they were using this new technology, or I'll call it new at the time, um, to actually, uh, look at infrastructure and so on and so forth. So that open door, that door opening, that, you know, coming into and looking at Hedera through Brett and, and team came through, you know, one of the colleagues through IBM. Who's, who's no longer with IBM? I would say the rest is history. I mean, because the industry <laughs> is so dynamic. So, I mean, and I, and I wish that person, I mean, that, that's been an open, that's been a great opportunity and only an attestation of what, what's happening in our, a confirmation that is a positive confirmation. You know, there's, you know, the pros, pros that we see of what's happening in the industry is so, so dynamic that people can go off and do their own. Uh, look at how they can carve out their own journeys with this, with these sets of technologies. Absolutely. And so you've talked, you know, you have talked a little bit about um, participating and sharing the decentralized identity um, work. What do you hope to accomplish or, you know, how do you see yourself now in this new role on the board? What would you, um, what would you like to do? Well, I mean, I take the, the role of the board of directors very seriously with my new, with my colleagues and the board itself. So it's, it's looking at how we, uh, agree on governance and what governance looks like, uh, for, for Hedera as a whole. And, uh, you know, all things equal, uh, realizing that we have different, uh, communities. And so first and foremost is having those conversations that, uh, we at Cineverse call, uh, uh, de- you know, seek to understand and debate and decide, right? So seek to understand and, and debate and decide. So, and, and there, we want to make sure, I think as a community and especially having had a, you know, understanding at wh- where we're going and looking at some of the, some, some of the top of mind issues is to assure that we have a governance in place that, uh, such that people, such that the community, because it's community driven, um, understand it, uh, and it is, uh, uh, and, and people can, and, you know, look at how they can gravitate toward that. Uh, I did lead in with the concern in the industry that there is negative press out there with what's happening and decentralized autonomous, I'll say, to say DAOs as a whole. And we don't want to go down that path of, you know, uh, go down that, that, that path, uh, per se. And so what I love about this group is that there is the debate. There is, hey, let's look at what we need to look at together and, um, and seek a better, uh, seek a path forward such that it's not going to put us in the light of any negative press, uh, and actually, uh, amplify the positive here. And we can hold it up as a standard. And that's more, most importantly for me is to hold it, hold it, um, you know, Hedera as a standard overall. So as a director on the board, uh, uh a, an independent director, I think this is, uh, I believe strongly that this is a great opportunity, uh, for, for myself and for my colleagues together collectively. Absolutely. And that's so much the ethos of Hedera, right? In terms of demonstrating the real and tangible and practical ways that this technology can be used for good and, um, you know, is being used in very pragmatic, um, real world terms. Um, while we have you, Monique, I do want to ask, since you do have, you know, such a broad reach and you are part of so many different organizations that are talking about DLT, both, you know, internally as well as um, through your work with WEF and others, 
What are you hearing in the market um, related to distributed ledger technology and its applications? You know, setting aside sort of the negative, some of the negativity around DAOs. I strongly, well, if I look at DLT, I think uh, we've passed that chasm already. I think that what we're seeing now are actual use cases coming together and actual business. I mean, in the GSMA, for example, uh, our purview is really 80% business and, you know, 20% of the technology. So you don't create a technology just for technology's sake. You're looking at where you could remove friction per se and, and look at how you deal with autom- automation so that you kind of deal with those types of examples. So there is, uh, we, we are seeing adoption. Uh, we're also looking, we're seeing, a, 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 we're seeing also third, what, how do you deal with uh, third party if you want to uh, understand, um, you know, tr- what, what is trusted, especially in several types of verticals, whether it is, um, you know, pharmaceuticals and, and so on, right? I mean, those are the, the, those are kind of examples. So DLT in its various forms um, are, as being adopted. I think the issue that we're going to find more and more is what does interoperability mean? You know, what does true interoperability look like? What does chain to chain interoperability, uh, types of uh, interoperability? We have Ethereum, you have Hyperledger, Fabric, you have, you know, uh, Quorum and so on, uh, consensus Quorum, Ethereum derivatives, et cetera. So we have to kind of have an agreement of what does that look like, especially if you're talking about it from an enterprise perspective, because enterprises, they care deeply about their management systems, right? Their OSS and BSS systems, uh, you know. And, and so when we have something that is going to uh, be problematic uh, in, in, in looking at inter- interoperability uh, to those systems, we will have a... I think a challenge in terms of true adoption. I mean, full fledge adoption. So we have to make sure it is a phased approach in the industry. So somebody's, you know, people are looking at it uh, from other aspects. I mean, uh, now the tokenization, token economics. I mean, we're looking at other aspects of, of the, the discussions itself. And, um, and so adoption is happening. It's been happening, which is a, a good thing. I think there's going to be also aspects of what does security look like or, or security and privacy, which also has sort of interesting levels. So those are going to, I mean, it's not going to be a lack of work <laughs> or a lack of significant and I would just say a lack of um, meaningful work in this space. I mean, uh, you know, we, there are folks who are looking at meta, the metaverse now. I mean, one of the areas that I've been involved in since 2016 has been ex- I, with the IEEE that has been, you know, looking at ethics and extended reality. Now, folks are kind of looking at it, packaging and saying, okay, extended and augmented reality is that something called the metaverse and then metaverse and blockchain and metaverse and blockchain and NFTs. So, I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's interesting, but insofar, and this is the important aspect of it. You know, you can look at what a TAM looks like. You can look at the business case looks like, what it looks like. But in communities, it has to be adopted, right? It has to be trusted. And there is where I really want to be focused on when we're talking about Hedera. Uh, what does trust look like? Um, and what does it feel like? Otherwise, we uh, will just be another headline. And that is not the space I don't think we should be in. I think just another headline, which is a negative headline. I think we have all the reason to be positive here. So trust, it's all about trust, especially when we talk about decentralized identity. It's all about trust. Absolutely. And Monique, you bring up such great points, you know, both for um, existing enterprises as well as for any organization or group or community, interoperability and security are going to be paramount. I think we hopefully learned our lesson, you know, with the way we built the the internet the first time, right? We build it sort of with, with, um, with trust in a different way. We, we assumed that people wouldn't use it for evil. Um, and so now we have to, in some ways, you know, flip that script on its head and assume that we need to build in trust into the platforms and build in security and interoperability into those platforms so that it doesn't get used for evil. Well said. I, I I would say well said. I mean, technology is not going to protect us from nefarious um, uh, folks, you know, in the industry or greed, but w- we should be able to build some level of trust here, right? And so, and I think that's where where people are looking at it uh, from that perspective. I think people are looking at, you know, what does regulation uh, feel like, look like, you know, in the European Union, there are discussions in that space 
uh, et cetera. Uh, and certainly I know in North America. So if we can create, um, you know, we can expect some level of, re- I, I do believe we can expect some level of reg- regulation, at least uh, what, it, at least talking with, with, uh, uh, regulators and policymakers, because we should be talking with policymakers and taking them along this journey together. But if we do this well, and and there's no reason why we cannot do it well, uh, we can be the standard in the industry. And 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 I see the ind- I see all of the I see it all sort of uh, the silos kind of breaking down. And so, you know, we talk a lot at the internet and the internet of value and what that what that means, etc. The cat is out out of the <laughs> out of the hat right now so you can't kind of put it to back there it's been people have been talking about this for some time now and because of what because of trust and so uh if we can think about how we create trust and enable trust and that that it's not complicated for people let me go back we if you do it well in hiding the complexity hiding it is an art uh you know from a business perspective but if people want to know really what's underneath the the hood and how the motor works, you should be able, and we as a community should be able to talk it to that level too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Monique, thank you so much for taking the time. We really appreciate it. And we also thank you for your service on the board um, and appreciate your work in helping to shepherd um, the community and the technology and the governance. Um, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Zenobia. Thank you so much. Thank you.